Hey guys, Todd Helms here, on the road to pick up our new wingman from Southern Oak Kennels. So, I've got everything I need for the puppy for the most part in here. I've got poop bags, I've got a little lead, although at this age, I'm probably not gonna need it. I've got paper towels, I've got a little toy for him, and I have a sweatshirt, I have a hoodie in here that smells like me um, for him to sleep on and lay on and get him used to my smell. And he's probably going to just be in this a little bit here and there because in the RV he's going to be, you know, probably in my lap most of the time bonding. But make sure you have something like this whether you're flying or not so you have everything you need. If I was flying, I'd have puppy pads that I could put down in like an uh, airport restroom. Let the puppy run around in there, do his business, pick it all up, throw it in the trash. It's clean and easy. Uh, coffee. <laughs> yes. I told you we're giving away a pair of Leupold sunglasses on this trip. Um, so I've got those packed. Water. You think, well, you can get water anywhere. Yeah, but the puppy's going to live here, so I'm going to start acclimating him to the water here now. Dogs don't have the same tendency to get upset stomach from different water sources like people do, but they still are, can be sensitive to it. So I'm packing water for the dog from where he's going to live my water and then the Yeti bucket is a phenomenal way to transport food I have more food than I need in here but just in case and I've got the new Yeti bowls puppy sized ones or small dog sized ones and I've got about five pounds maybe ten pounds of food in there this thing's awesome because I can throw everything in I can throw bottles of water in there if I wanted to and it's all contained nothing's gonna get to it and everything else. Yeah, no bugs, rats and... no rats, no mice, no water's gonna get in there. It's not gonna tip over and spill, it's not gonna crush. So I did wash it out before I put the food in there. So <laughs> cool, let's get this loaded and roll. how much time we have remaining before we get to Southern Oak Kennels in Oklahoma, Mississippi. 20 hours, 59 minutes, 42 seconds. Missouri River, baby. We're three quarters of the way across South Dakota. Rolling. Gonna get it make a fuel stop up here on top of the hill. We'll probably grab a bite to eat someplace soon and and then it's just keep heading south east to Iowa. Iowa. We skipped Nebraska. Morning everybody. It is about uh, seven o'clock. We are between Omaha, Nebraska and Kansas City. Yes, I'm still wearing the same shirt that I was yesterday. We slept for a couple hours last night in a Walmart parking lot. Anybody that's traveled across country in a big rig or an RV is probably staying the night in a Walmart parking lot. That's what we did. Crashed for a couple hours, got some sleep, uh, coffeeed up this morning, and we're on the road. We're making great time and excited. We're more than halfway, and it's kind of hard, or it's kind of crazy to think that this next, next leg of the journey's, you know, it's broken up into smaller little chunks, so it seems like it goes faster when you're just pedal to the metal coming across Wyoming and South Dakota with wide open space in front of you. Nothing but the wind to push you along. It seems like it takes forever to go 100 miles, but here it breaks it up pretty quick. Interesting how the Topography changes, you know, vegetation's different. Getting excited, excited to see that little black puppy. So here we come, Barton. Headed your way, man. We are two hours from Southern Oak County. It is puppy day. 
I'm stoked. I'm absolutely stoked. These guys are like, hey, whatever. It's a dog. <laughs> it's a no-name dog. Can't believe I drove 2,000 miles for a dog with no name. All right. We're there, man. Well, let's walk down there. Let's do it. That's mine over there. The one you can't hardly see. Hi, bud. Oh, hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. He is gracious. Hi, buddy. He is so sweet. Puppy breath. Puppy breath. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Here he is. Can you say hi? <laughs> yeah. Hi, buddy. I'm Barton Ramsey and uh, founded Southern Oak Kennels a little over a decade ago. And uh, we import, breed, and train Labrador Retrievers from the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland. And so this is our headquarters and we send puppies home from here for the next little bit. We're about to actually pack it all up and move and rebuild. Cool. Well, thank you for having us here today i mean you had a pile of people when, yeah. we, when we walked in yeah we had two litters going home today for us it could be just another day like it's work you're sending puppies home but everyone's getting what's going to be their next hunting buddy and family member for you know 10 to 15 years and that's a big deal so you want to make sure by you know gets to have the fun full experience of, of being here it's like anything you want people to come back sure you know you get somebody that buys a dog the dog's only part of the equation. You know, they probably, they want to feel like they're part of the Southern Oak Kennels family, probably for lack of a better word, Yeah. you know? Yeah, we, we try to make that happen for sure. And uh, we said early on, we, we had a few people that bought dogs from us who had purchased dogs in the past from other places. And it kind of baffled me, like, why didn't you go back there? And I told Bethany, uh, my wife, I said, look, my goal with all this is that I would sell these people a dog and their kids a dog and their grandkids a dog. I want them to keep coming back to us because Absolutely. They, they trust us as a breeder. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, this is, this is a first, first rate deal. I mean, we walked Thanks, in man. here and I've seen, I bought dogs from other breeders. I've, you know, you, you see the dogs on the tailgates at sporting goods stores and, you sure. know, and, but I know for me, I had a quality British Labrador, I, ha I still have at home, and it got to the point where I need another one. Yeah. And I start looking around, looking at who's doing what, looking at who's got what dogs, and I am no, I am no pedigree expert, I am no bloodline right. expert, but looking at what you guys do, looking at how you run your operation, how you handle yourselves and have branded this and built this, built this brand, it, I was impressed. Thanks, man. We Tell, appreciate it. How, I mean, what's the process? What's the thinking? Because there's definitely a, it doesn't just happen. Right. You got to build it. Yeah. You know, before doing Southern Oak Kennels, I was um, in church ministry. And part of my job was to create community and, and help community to flourish in a group of people that were centered on um, a, a a singular sort of passion sure. and I was able to take that and when we started Southern Oak Kennels it just sort of naturally became what I would do is it wasn't just about the dogs it was about hey I want people to feel like they're a part of a community uh, dogs are something that people are very passionate about um, for good and for bad you know better or worse and and if you can build some community around that which I think we've done with our, our social media with uh, here, this place, with our events that we do, and with just bringing people together around something that they love, which is their dog, uh, that, that really is what built the brand for us. We didn't have to do as much work on branding as much as we did building a community, and our community became the brand. So it was, it was really fun doing it that way, and, and the other part of that equation is you still have to have dogs that, that meet the standard and, and that right. are what people expect. So you have a really killer brand, and after a year or so of selling people dogs that don't make the, the cut, mm -hmm. you know, then the word gets out. So we really emphasize a lot on having dogs that we like. Dogs that are, this is what I would want to own. This is what I would want to hunt over. This is what I do hunt over. And that's what we're going to produce. The dog 
doesn't enhance your experience in the outdoors, then you're really missing it. I mean, it's, it's such a fun part of hunting when you have a dog that when you leave, you think this was a really fun hunt, but it really was excellent because of the dog. The dog right. made it like worth being out here. Right. And um, you remember great hunts. You know, I can tell you some hunts I've been on that like, hey, that was a real banger. You know, like we really, really got into them, but I really remember the great retrieves. After, when it came time for my next one, I went, I, gotta, I wanna do this. I wanna be more purposeful. Sure. About this. Yeah. What is it, in your mind, what does that process look like? Yeah, um, you know, I used to train dogs just for the general public when I first got into this, and I trained a chocolate lab that was just phenomenal. Like, he was a great dog. And I asked the guy, where'd you get this dog? And I think he paid $200 for him, got him out of a newspaper ad. And I remember thinking, my goodness, like, how did you want, this dog's a stud, you know, killing it. I trained dozens of, this dog's probably not going to cut it, you know, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to make you a dog that'll go retrieve, but man, this is not, and you know, as I got into pedigrees and breeding and, and, and looking at what evaluations there are for different dogs, whether it's here in the UK or whatever it is, you know, really you're rolling the dice, it's genetics no matter what, you yep. know, I mean, it's it, even what we do, we're not selling t-shirts and selling them to people. We can't just scrap the ones that didn't turn out perfectly. And there's genetics, so nature plays a huge role. So what I like to say is, at, at this point, what we're, my job when it comes to the breeding program is to do my best to stack the odds in your favor. And I'm, I'm excited to put CGA to work, to put yeah. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy to work. What, what are some of those first steps yeah. that I can expect? Man, what's great about Cornerstone is with, with the program that you're in, 52 plus, you've got our original complete Gun Dog Academy, which has a module called success with your new puppy. And it's gonna have crate training, videos in a PDF, uh, common issues in the first week, proper socialization, what to do about biting, like all of that, right? And then you've also got on the 52 plus side, Josh recording himself doing all that with Violet and recording these videos for a week as like, hey, we're struggling with this, this is what we're gonna do. Hey, we're trying to teach her this, this is what we're gonna do. So everything starts from the time you come home with proper socialization, proper introduction. By socialization, I just mean teaching your puppy that these things that it encounters in the world are good, positive things that it can be excited about, right? Other people, other tastes, smells, uh, noises especially, water, decoys, calls, whatever. Whatever it is, the dog needs to learn these are great things and you do that by associating them with a positive. And so Cornerstone really walks through a lot of that with puppies and puts you on a proper schedule. And then even for the family, one of the benefits is you've got an app, you've got videos on the computer. You can say, hey kids, this week with Fido, here's what we're doing. So if I'm at work and you guys are home, just remember, here's kind of the rules. And we watch this video together and then they're on the same page and then they get interested in seeing the, the progress. You just lined out exactly how I'm gonna do this with sit down with the kids and be like, guys, these are the things that we're working on this week. And they're gonna see obviously me doing it, but it's gonna be moms involved, both daughters are involved. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. For Cornerstone, for a guy that's taking a dog home with his family, wants to have a, a great gun dog who's super steady, will mark multiples, run good blinds, but also be a great addition to the family and have, you know, obedience to me is so important. Um, and, and it's the, the, the cornerstone that we build from is obedience and it's the foundation of all retrieving problems. My mentor used to always say that 90% of retrieving problems were obedience problems. And uh, I firmly believe that. So to be able to establish that with your family, I think it'd be awesome, man. I can't wait to see how it goes. I guess what I was thinking is, you know, we, we travel around, we're going places and doing, stopping places and doing stuff. And I found myself reattaching with America, with our country, with people. It's, I think it's easy and I, I've, fallen, I've fallen into that trap where you might look down your nose at other people or you might like, well, I'm not gonna go there because they're like this, or I don't wanna go here because it's not safe. And this trip's been a reminder for me 
that maybe I'll get a little marijuana. One of the easy things to do, especially coming off of off of the you know the last 18 months that we've had in this country and the world. Right. One of the easy things to do is to lock yourself in your house or lock yourself in in your neighborhood or your community or even your state. And um, you know our state is a perfect example of that. You know the. I guess the COVID-19 hoax that happened in the last 18 months, and I'm not saying that it didn't, that there wasn't a disease, there was. Right. It did exist. Right. But where our country went with that, where our world went with that, versus where our state, Wyoming, went with it, completely different. South Dakota, completely different. Two reasons why we drove through Wyoming, South Dakota, and the odd thing, when we got to the South Dakota border, we were almost halfway there halfway here I know it's crazy but it's easy for us to lock ourselves into that community and not explore and I'm telling you this was a great reminder that our country is really diverse our country not only in the people the weather the environment the crops the everything and it is it is get out there and explore because it'll give you a, a, an unbelievable appreciation for how hard our, our country works, for how hard our country has worked, the history of our country. If you remember what we have gone through and what we have done as a society and as a country, COVID's they didn't even have a chance. Are you kidding me? That's nothing. It was a reminder of me that this country is great. It is an awesome, awesome country. Get out there, visit with people, talk to people, stay in a Walmart parking lot for a night. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome going to that Walmart this morning. And everybody's like, how are you doing? How are you doing? It's just wonderful. And the infrastructure that this country has that allows us to travel like this is insane. Absolutely insane. You couldn't, you can't do this in very many other countries, not for 2,000 miles. So get out there, do it, grab a puppy, tell Barton hi. <laughs>
Let's go. We made it. We are home. We left saying goodbye to the family. And now we're going to get Hondo out and let him see everybody. Ready? Come on, bud. Poor little guy. But we're home. Come on. Oh, it's hot. It's 103 degrees. It's 103. Here he is. There's Hondo. Climb on you. Oh, don't don't run from him. Don't yeah. run from him. He wants to meet you. Kneel down. <laughs> there you go. There. See, he likes you already. He likes you already. I know how guy. He likes me a lot. I wonder how tall he is. He's soft. Go pet him. Well, here we are, home at last. After almost 4,000 miles of travel, Hondo is home at the Helms' house. Hopefully, for a long, long time. We'll keep, you we'll keep you guys updated on the training updates. We're going to do weekly updates on the training. We're going to try to drop those on Fridays for you. And we're going to progress right through 52 plus with Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy. <laughs> and we're gonna make this guy into a stellar gun dog with that program all right thanks for thanks for being with us until next time we'll see you in the field <laughs>